Can you hear me now? Yes. So what I'd like to do is give you some perspectives from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. How many of you are familiar with the OECD? Can I see a show of hands? Mmm, few. We've got to do better with our publicity and our visibility. So the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is an international organization. It is based in Paris. Uh, currently, it has 34 member countries, and it is a policy forum. It's a forum where governments come together to learn from each other, learn from practices, and uh, identify best practices so that they can address the social and economic challenges of um, their countries. And one major challenge is clearly aging. Um, in 1998, the OECD started to look at aging. And in fact, I'm, I'm sorry that Richard is following me rather than uh, preceding me because a lot of the work that the OECD did at that time addressed some of the issues that Richard Sussman uh, is going to talk to you about, and that is visibility trends. There is a major concern uh, of government is to look at whether their elderly populations are going to be healthy and they're going to be active in uh, their older lives. In fact, one of the, the uh, strong statements of the 1998 work of the OECD was what uh, can governments do to keep uh, the elderly active and healthy. And we've heard that one of the possibilities to have a, an Olympic game soon with the, uh, with the older populations. Um, and the report that the OECD developed at that time uh, is a report that is still available online, is very, uh, uh, I think, uh, a great value still, and it is about maintaining prosperity in an aging society. Today we can, uh, cannot claim that um, uh, many of those perspectives uh, have changed. I think that uh, what we see is still, um, and uh, I'll go through some of this data, and, and Richard Sussman will as well, uh, we certainly see an increase in visibility trends uh, that vary very much across countries, and there is an effort for, uh, of uh, governments to uh, lifelong uh, healthy aging. But we're also facing a paradigm shift, and we're not looking any longer just at the liabilities, just at visibility trends. We're also looking at the opportunities of older populations and how, in fact, we can transform the li liabilities through uh, innovation. And this is really the focus of my presentation. Just about two weeks ago, the OECD uh, countries held a workshop together with the APEC, the uh, Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation countries, to discuss this very issue and to come up with an international roadmap for collaboration. So my talk will address some of the challenges and opportunities that will were discussed at this uh, workshop. It will look at how countries are integrating the aging challenge in their innovation activities and a few of the lessons learned. And then I will get to the statements and the international roadmap that the Asian um, countries and the OECD countries put together at the end of their workshop. So I think you've seen a lot of graphs, um, and, I, and you have um, probably know um, much more than me at this point about the Swedish situation. What I'd like to do here is just give you a sense of how rapidly some of the countries that perhaps you've not been discussing today are um, as well aging, and particularly the developing countries. What this slide shows is countries uh, like uh, Korea, uh, China, uh, Brazil, um, Mexico, South Africa. They're similarly aging rapidly. And what we see is that uh, by 2050, they will be converging with many of um, the uh, trends that we see in OECD countries. One of the, um, uh, the, the, the most uh, uh, impressive uh, data that we uh, uh, were uh, that we we uh, we we heard about in in uh, Tokyo at the OECD APEC workshop was about the looming aging crisis in China. What this slide shows is how by to 2050, the uh, Chinese National Committee on Aging actually forecasts uh, 350 million older people above 65. With this, this number is the number of people currently in the EU 27 countries. So we're talking about 
a, a significant number of, uh, of older populations. Also, another uh, perhaps piece of information that I can give you and that you, you might have not been um, discussing as much until now is the steep rise in the share of the 80 plus years old. We've heard a lot about um, the rise in the 65 plus, but what is astounding is the number of 80 plus uh, and 80 and older people. And again, across all of the um, uh, many countries, even beyond uh, the developed countries, what we see is that there is an increase even in India, we s increases in Brazil, um, the Russian Federation, um, uh, Japan. Japan is leading in, in this trend. And why is this important? It's important because um, many of the disability trends and uh, the, the uh, diseases such as dementia actually um, are uh, highest in this uh, cohort. Uh, they the data from uh, the Canadian study of health and aging shows how Alzheimer's and dementia increases and escalates after 80 uh, and uh, to, to an extent of, of uh, really uh, hitting nearly more than 50% of the uh, population. So this is, this is of some, some concern. Now, all of this clearly um, impacts, uh, will have enormous impact uh, on uh, uh, the structures of our economy, and uh, this, this is best described by the old age dependency ratio. What is the old age dependency ratio? It's the ratio of 65 plus older populations to the working population. And again, what this slide shows is that um, the old dependency ratio is converging. Uh, by 2050, there will be two workers for one retired person, and this will be uh, a uh, situation across many countries, including, again, um, those that we consider today emerging economies or developing countries, and will have enormous implications for our labor markets. But an aging population can also be expected to create significant pressure on our public expenditures, and this is one of the major concerns of uh, the OECD, which addresses uh, the uh, particularly the economic uh, policies of countries. It will have um, pressures in particular on our pension, uh, on our um, health expenditures, and long-term care expenditures. Currently, health expenditures across OECD countries are about 9% of uh, GDP, and even ma marginal increase, and we know that uh, this marginal increase is ahead of us with increasing uh, populations 80 plus, will have uh, a, a particularly strong uh, impact on the um, public purse, which is uh, the major um, payer for uh, health and uh, long-term care in uh, OECD countries. So clearly this, not by chance, much of the discussion right now about aging has used terms like um, tidal wave, tsunami, earthquake. There's a great deal of preoccupation around with uh, the, this, these trends and the fiscal burden on uh, uh, our uh, public purse. But um, these negative scenarios need not to be really our fate, and uh, there are significant opportunities to address some and miti some of these challenges and mitigate the risks of aging through uh, innovations, but they require smart policies, and they require some thinking today on how one could put in place um, uh, uh, these smart policies and programs for innovation. And one of the strongest messages from uh, the Tokyo workshop is also that we need not to lose sight of the fact that the older populations are a resource for our societies and a resource for our economies and markets. An aging population also changes the composition of demand in our market. This is data from the United Kingdom, and it looks at how um, there is, will be a share, a different, uh, a shifting of expenditure by category here um, in terms of, of sectors, uh, from food to clothing, housing, transport, communication, and according to uh, the age cohorts. And these forecasts, um, indicate that there are sectors uh, where there will be oppor new business opportunities and new market opportunities, but these opportunities need to be harnessed now. 
One area that um, was discussed and certainly is an area of great focus across OECD countries is how to seize the opportunities of information technology, in particular to shift care out of expensive care settings and into the community oh. and home. What I just uh, showed you previously is that there is enormous concern of rising health expenditure and, and potential rising long-term care expenditure. And information oh. technologies have uh, offered the promise and the potential to shift um, uh, these um, care and to reduce cost and empower uh, uh, independent life uh, for older populations. In particular, there is a growing potential of uh, mobile health. Uh, by 2011, there are the number of cellular subscriptions uh, worldwide uh, were uh, about five billion. And uh, smartphones, as much as uh, mobile phones, iPads, tablets, they do provide a significant opportunity for remote uh, care, for new models of care. We call them new smart models of care. There's also growing potential for telehealth, for new forms of telemonitoring, uh, and um, uh, for new forms of communication with care provider. And this is a whole universe of innovation uh, of great promise and that OECD countries are looking at. <coughs> what um, another area that uh, was discussed and it is of great relevance, particularly you've heard uh, from uh, um, discussions this morning, is how to seize the opportunities of social and user-driven innovation. The, important, um, the importance is to address the user needs and to involve the users in co-designing and co-producing. The user is, is uh, the final customer. Uh, we've seen uh, and we've learned of failures in information technology just by having um, uh, developed technologies from the top down and not sufficiently involved the user. Um, but promoting co-design and delivering new services that address uh, the user needs is uh, a way to uh, innovate uh, by empowering the user in this innovation. And one particular um, aspect uh, here is how to encourage social ventures for and by older people. Uh, you've seen at the beginning of the afternoon a movie uh, looking at how older people um, can engage in, in arts and music. There are surveys that show that uh, older people now see themselves having a full life still ahead of them. Um, a survey by the Shaftesbury Partnership in the United Kingdom showed that when they are asked what stage of life they're in, uh, the 60, 64 year olds say that they were in the middle of adulthood. They see, they see they're, they're, put, they're still in a, in a great potential to contribute to, to the labor market and to society. So there is, um, uh, this is a significant area for development for governments and, uh, and for policy development in order to, to harness uh, this energy and this, um, the social contribution of the older people. Finally, another area that was discussed in the OECD Tokyo workshop, and it is of relevance, is for governments to push innovation in directions that uh, will address the needs of public sector, and, and particularly the needs um, where uh, there are areas uh, that are not met by market mechanisms alone and where we talk about a potential market failure. And this means putting in place procurement policies uh, and innovative procurement policies to pull um, technology and innovation in the right direction. Finally, we need um, stronger, broader public-private partnerships and promoting collaboration also with the uh, third sector. These, uh, this means uh, broadening the way we do business and broadening the way we uh, operate this provides opportunities for delivering public services for the elderly, which are not um, uh, currently available. It looks at um, filling gaps in public service delivery and uh, in uh, relying in uh, what we call today social innovation, and that is community-based uh, new forms of uh, innovation. Now, 
what I'd like to conclude with um, is now with a roadmap for international action. These are new, all sorts of areas where innovation can be uh, fruitful, productive, and can make a change. Uh, however, many countries, all countries need to do more to unlock this innovation, and there are barriers um, in, uh, in delivering um, innovation. There are lack of standards, uh, for example, and need for interoperability for information technology. Uh, we're lacking the business space, and often what is out there is not reimbursed by the public sector. So I showed you some of the potential of telemonitoring and of smartphones and new models for smart care, but we know that currently there are no ways to reimburse uh, those type of services. So we need, need ways to address um, uh, this issue. There's also a problem in terms of financing innovation, and so many businesses are um, do not see the incentives of entering um, innovation for aging or for welfare, welfare technology. So there are there are needs. There is a need here to align the incentives and to uh, encourage governments to take action. The first thing is to um, change the perspective that aging population is an opportunity and not a crisis, and that countries uh, must innovate to meet the challenges of the 21st century aging population. What this requires a proactive uh, and broad-based approach, so to boost investment, align policies, uh, promote scalable solutions, because right now what we have is a, is a wealth of pilots, but not enough scalable solutions. Uh, we need to recognize the need for cross-cutting research and user need, and this will require a whole of government action. We'll need to uh, enable new mechanisms of sharing uh, large data sets, for example, for aging in order to advance aging research, particularly on dementia and Alzheimer's. There was a, um, a very strong call for international cooperation on aging um, on Alzheimer's and dementia. This is an area that has been lagging uh, behind and just uh, the possibility, the ability to delay institutionalization could actually bring back major savings and highlight the roles and the benefits of entrepreneurship and innovative financing. So these are all areas for government action uh, that uh, the OECD APEC workshop identified and where there is gonna be um, uh, further work done at international level, and we hope that uh, this message will be carried through to uh, the OECD community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I wonder about policies. Do you see any special challenges when it comes to policies? Well, there are many challenges. Uh, when it comes to policies, for example, in uh, absorbing information technologies, we know that there are privacy issues. Uh, there are policies in relation to, as I mentioned, reimbursement of some of these services and products. We're looking at um, uh, all of the fiscal practices that need to be in place in order to align incentives and encourage businesses to, uh, to start working in this area. So the, I think that we are at the very beginning yeah. uh, of understanding what is an enabling environment for innovation for aging. And there is a need to encourage uh, the, the small and medium enterprises and businesses to enter uh, this And you uh, would say user-driven innovation is one way to? User-driven innovation is a, is a necessity. Yeah. Uh, we've seen here with, um, in Sweden, there is um, an initiative called RoboDallin. Uh, it is a very interesting uh, initiative. It's meant to accelerate the development of robots for um, uh, older populations. Now, robotics is an area that we've heard a lot about, uh, but very few of these robots have uh, actually made it um, to older people's houses. So uh, what this particular in, um, institution does is accelerate translation of research to care to the home of the older populations. And it, it does it by, by putting in place um, the appropriate support to research, to technology transfer, to putting in place intellectual property rights for financing. Uh, but clearly all of this was also possible because of the very innovation-friendly environment in Sweden, 
uh, with uh, new procurement uh, approaches. Uh, even Nova has been uh, uh, very active in moving ahead in uh, and innovating uh, their procurement policies. Yes. Uh, and it has been also very active in, uh, in encouraging actually new information technologies in the home of, uh, of all the people. And you will find that on our website, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. You're welcome.